Hello everybody, it's Payam here from Niche. Hope you're all well. It's been a long while. Um, I've been really slow at these videos uh, lately. I apologize. Um, we've been really busy um, and uh, some good stuff, some bad stuff. So in this video, we thought we'll talk about um, buy to let. Uh, a lot of my um, uh, subscribers have been saying, look, you know, you're leaving buy to let alone. What's going on with buy to let? Um, I wanted to do a, uh, a good roundup on buy to let. We'll talk about um, looking at various products for higher rate taxpayers, lower rate taxpayers, portfolio landlords. We'll look at limited company buy to let. We'll look at how rental assessment is affecting things, stress testing. Um, so it's an in-depth sort of look into buy to let for people that are looking to get into buy to let, but also all those people that have got buy to let properties and some of the challenges that I've seen and I predicted within this market and how lenders are um, trying to deal with the challenges that we've got and as well as brokers and so forth. So um, hopefully you find this useful. If you do, please do subscribe and, and leave a comment. Uh, it does really help us uh, get out there. Um, so let's not beat around the bush. Uh, let's talk about what's happened with the buy to let. So I did a video, uh, I think probably towards the end of last year saying the death of buy to let or is this the death of um, certainly central London, London focus buy to let in terms of um, how the market was going to be affected. And sure enough, we've seen those effects follow through in terms of how rental calculations are hammering um, product selection for many landlords, how the lenders have been caught out literally by some of the rules that they've had to abide by, um, the costing, the funding, and all of those things have, um, have made uh, the market uh, really challenging for people. So let's look into um, the, the effects of it by actually looking at some uh, real life uh, products in various categories uh, from a rate perspective as well as from a product and rental calculation perspective. Look at uh, this chart that I've put together. Um, first of all, uh, we've, let's, let's get around some of these points. They, the figures will actually run uh, as of yesterday, so Sunday the 26th of the 2nd, 2023. Um, I've based it on £300,000 property value. Now, uh, the property value will have a massive bearing on some of these figures. If we're talking about a £125,000 property, there are different types of challenges we've got to look at. But essentially, the cheaper the properties are, the better, from a rental perspective, things work out. Okay, They're actually based on true cost. This means that we take into account the product fee, as well as all the other fees, as well as the product itself. I've excluded... Uh, products that essentially can be top sliced by the client's other earnings. So I've just worked it on the basis of what the property is yielding um, together with uh, what, what you, you, know, you can get from a mortgage rather than top slicing. And I'll explain what top slicing is. Top slicing is basically if you're short on rental calculation, there are some lenders that will say, look, if you've got £200 spare in your own income, we can put that on top of the shortfall. And in this climate is very helpful to have that facility. So there are some lenders that are winning business on the basis of that policy, okay? Now we'll look at that a little bit further. So buy to let, so let's look at um, buy to let from a low uh, rate perspective, okay? So as of yesterday, the best buy to let in the market from a rate perspective, uh, from my panel of lenders, we are whole of the market, um, uh, is 4.69 so 4.69 is the rate you would get now the good thing about this is the fee it's a flat fee that's why it's coming up the top so there may be cheaper products out there there may be a 4.39 somewhere or four percent somewhere but the fees uh, make a big difference okay and we've looked at over the next five years okay so that's actually a very competitive product if you think where you know, probably the best residential products out there are around about 3.99. I know Platform launched a 3.75 residential product, but the minimum loan size was 400,000 pounds, and I'm not sure if that's still there. Um, 
but you know you're looking at the best residential products around the four percent mark so to come out on a buy to let product with 4.69 with a flat fee of 1495 works really well now here's the challenge if you're going to get a 300,000 pound property value okay we've done it on a purchase right if you're going to get on that the issue that you're going to have is this 75% of it, which used to be the norm, 225,000, right? You will need 1,524 pounds. Now, I don't know too many 300,000 pounds properties in London. There's certainly going to be flats that are going to achieve that amount of rent. So there lies the challenge, right? So if you're going to buy a property for 150K, and you're going to get a rental of, I don't know, a thousand pounds. This product is not a bad fit. You've got to sit, you know, you've got to look at the other lending criteria. Is there a minimum income? Do they stress test the background portfolio? How do they stress test the background portfolio? Do they use some of your income as the stress testing as well? So, you know, it's not just about rate, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of some of the challenges. So for a 300,000 pound property, it's unlikely that's going to fit, okay? But it may fit for a £200,000 property, right? Now, because of that, I've actually run a calculation, again, the best rental calculation product out there, okay? So this is really important because a lot of the uh, properties in the South are just not, I mean, I've got buy to lets myself. If I had to go for a remortgage, just about make it work and i've probably got 50 60 percent equity in my buy to let so this is the challenge so the best rental calculation product is 4.79 so the rate you go up i'm that's really good that's not a bad rate have a look at the fee five percent fee so to get a loan of 225,000, to get the pleasure to get the loan of 225,000, the lender will charge you 11,250. Okay, granted, the rental only needs to be £1,123. But you see where I'm coming from here. This is the challenge, right? Now, people say, oh, it's the lenders. They're, they're cashing in. They're cashing in. It's the price of funding and it's the way that parameters work in regards to the regulatory, some of the rules they've got around it. Okay, what they've had to do to bring this rate down because they're going to work on the pay rate. What a pay rate means is. When you generally work, for, uh, you go to lenders on a five-year fixed, okay, they will base the rental calculation on the actual rate, okay? Now, the reality, this product is probably a 6% product. What they've had to do is add on those percentages to the fee to bring this rate lower so they can make the rental calculation fit. It's a real ass about way of doing things and it's horrendous and it's got to change okay B because of these rules what you're seeing is a five percent lending fee four percent three even some of the mainstream lenders even like lenders like the mortgage works which were vanilla mainstream really competitively priced lenders out there okay what you've got is they're coming out with a three percent lending fee so it's become the norm i've seen a seven percent lending fee so the, this, this point here, and this is for a lower rate taxpayer. It even, even gets worse for a high rate taxpayer, okay? So if you're in London or in the South generally, or you could be in, you know, in Birmingham, places like that where property prices have actually gone up quite a bit. Um, let's look at the higher rate taxpayer. So the higher rate taxpayer, exactly the same product, right? However, look how much you need as rent to make that deal work. So you haven't got a chance. If you've got a property worth 650, 700 in London and it's carrying a 400K mortgage on it, 350, which a lot of those pro properties do, there lies your challenge. So you've got to go for this thing here, right? Still, the rental calculation is better, okay? Because, you know, but that's the norm. You know, I think properties, it's still quite rich. That rental is quite rich. 300,000 pounds property in London, 1,300 pounds. It's still quite rich, I think. Um, but, you know, 4.79 is not bad. The rate's good. Again, 
similar product. Okay, same product. The rental calculation is the big one. Now, and again, it's working, you know, they've got various rules around that. <clears throat> so, a new breed of landlord sort of appeared uh, in the last few years, and I would say them a lot of the deals that we're doing on a limited company basis. Now, certainly on a the purchase, there are lots of people that are looking to move their portfolios into um, a limited company. You really need tax advice around this. It's so important you get your, before you contact any mortgage brokers, you start doing research about products, is you get your tax position sorted out. And I'm not talking about an accountant, go and speak to your accountant that does your books. I'm talking about getting a property tax specialist uh, uh, involved in it. Now, we've tied up with, with a firm recently. Um, I've always been sort of uh, hands-off. I don't really want to recommend certain firms. I didn't want to in the past, but I've, I've looked at it now and I've said, look, you know, it's, it's vital you guys need to speak to a firm, okay, a tax specialist, um, because it's getting more and more complicated. But let's look at a limited company, five-year fixed product, okay, Rental needed, so again, 4.79, 5% fee, okay? And that's the best rate in the market, okay? The best product based on a five-year fixed basis. Doesn't make a difference whether you're a high-rate taxpayer or lower-rate taxpayer. You work on a lower rental calculation on a limited company because limited companies are perceived to be paying lower tax uh, than a higher rate tax burr, which is, you know, 40% tax. So that's where the difference is. But if you look at it, this is the type of pricing that you're getting. Now, if, like I said, if the loan becomes smaller, if the property value is smaller, you have more options, okay? There are other products out there. Now, I have put this little bit here, just so you know, in terms of a flat fee product on a limited company basis, so if you do want to pay £11,000, there is a product out there, 1495 5.44 on a limited company. You will need a rental of £1,393 a month. So to give you an idea, there are flat fee products out there. The challenge is, as I mentioned, is if you're going to go with a flat fee, they're going to load the rate. The rate is going to be higher, okay? Um, but... It just, it just means if you're not, I mean, all of these training courses and the YouTube videos and, oh, yeah, I stacked up my property and I've got this and I've stacked this property and I've bought four more and I've got another eight more and I've got this and I've got this, I've refinanced this. It's all great, but you've got to understand where you could get caught on this. Now, granted, a lot of those YouTube buy-to-let people that I see, you know, they're buying properties in Wales that are worth, you know, 70K, 80K. Now, those cheaper properties, believe it or not, the rental calculations work quite well because they've high yielding properties, right? In the south and generally in the south, east and in the London area, people have never really relied heavily on rental income. Granted, they've had rental income because rates have been so low, but it's about price appreciation, okay? Um, but you, you know, now, not only are the property prices not going up as much, you're having to pay 5%. So you're losing 5% over five years, right? So this gives you an idea of where we are with the buy to let. Now, there is an added complication around rental calculations, whether it's, you know, 125% of, you know, at five and a half or 145%, which is generally the high rate taxpayers pay, or 125% is the limited company as well. Another challenge is, background portfolios right so there is a defined uh process where where lenders will define you as a portfolio landlord and that's owning four or more buy to lets as soon as you own four or more buy to lets things become more complicated some lenders have got minimum income levels then some lenders have got a stress testing of, well, all of them pretty much stress test the background portfolio at a rate, okay? Now, what that rate is will determine whether you can get a mortgage on the property that you're buying. So, it's got to do with this property as well as what you own in the background. Now, typical challenges with this is you may have one or two properties that are yielding lower, Okay, they're just not getting, you've had the same tenant in there for 12 years and you haven't bumped your rent up and now you're being penalized. 
you've got a, a property that's empty. Challenge, all of a sudden the background stress testing doesn't look really well, okay? Now, there are a few lenders um, that don't stress test the background, and that's so important. So there's a couple of lenders that don't stress test background, um, or what they will say is, look, as long as the rent is washing his face with covering the mortgage, we're okay. As long as you're not heavily stacked, we're okay. So there are those, but you will find more and more, generally, majority of the lenders will do stress test backgrounding. Now, the more high street, the more keen, the more better price you are, the more stress testing they will do in the background. Okay, so the difference between this lender and this lender could be, so you might be eligible for this, the rental calculation may work, you, your criteria is fine, your personal circumstances are fine, but your background portfolio may not be, okay? Now, there are some lenders that will not deal with portfolio landlords, okay? So if you own more four or more, they won't actually accept the case. Uh, there are lenders that will say up to 10, and then more than 10, um, you know, unlimited lenders. So there are rules around background portfolios. The good news is I've been speaking to a number of lenders and if you own under four, so you're not a portfolio landlord, they tend not to stress test the background portfolio and they tend to just really concentrate on the property itself. So that's where, that's where the, the market is. Now, what type of deals am I doing right now? Let's talk about some of the deals that I'm doing. Flats above shops. I'm doing a number of those at the moment. Okay, we've got one or two lenders that are generally, they're okay with it, depending on type of shop it is. If it's like a convenience store, off license, things like that, it gets a little bit more complicated, restaurants and, uh, I don't know, takeaways, things like that. But there are lenders that will do them. You generally need a, a, a good level of deposit on those and, and a good yielding. Semi-commercial stuff, we're doing a number on, a uh, lot of conversion stuff, so converting uh, um, sort of shops with flats into uh, other things, uh, as I say. Uh, portfolio landlords, loads in Scotland. Uh, and um, I have to say, I've, 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 believe it or not, although I'm based in, in the south here, I've got a lot of Scottish clients, uh, and a lot of those landlords are fuming at some of the rules the government's put in in regards to, you know, it's a mess. In, in Scotland, I have to say, it's a complete mess. Okay, they've ruined that market and landlords are selling up. I've got clients literally, I'm looking at their portfolio, they're going, look, I'm going to get rid of three of these. Can you just refinance this one? Can you put it on a no early repayment charge type of product? Because I want to get rid of it. So they're offloading pro properties and it's really sad because essentially that's going to bump up the rent. There's going to be less stock out there in the market for the rents, for the renters and the rent's going to go up. So hopefully what they've done in Scotland doesn't happen here. Um, a lot of um, a lot of people that are stuck with their lenders. So because of these rules, the rental calculations don't fit. So a lot of the lenders out there are just keeping those clients. Okay, clients can't go anywhere. They're essentially mortgage prisoners. Uh, they can't meet the rental calculations go to go elsewhere. So they're doing product transfers. So a lot more product transfers happening because on product transfers, lenders are not stress testing the actual deal. Okay. So what is quite good is a lot of people are coming to me and say, look, we think rates are going to come down. Okay. Can you get me a product transfer just for a two year product, please? Uh, and we can because there's no stress testing because remember I've concentrated on a five years here if you went for a two-year fix the stress testing would be a lot worse and you would need a lot larger rents here okay so it, in most cases in the south a two-year fix unless you've got a very low loan just doesn't fit doesn't fit the rental calculations however if you've got an existing product with a lender you could do a product switch whether we do it for you whether you do it yourself you know what's happening we're doing a lot of two-year product switches uh, there are tracker products out there now um, there are a few no early repayment charge products out there but again you're paying for it whether it's on the rate or whether you're paying on the fee if it's on the rate then you've got to have a good rental calculation to make that work so product transfer is a big one people are sticking with their lenders um, sitting this one out and finding out what they're doing um, there's a lot of home improvement stuff happening. Everybody's like um, looking at the, you know, the EPC changes that are going to come in, uh, which are again madness. Um, you know, they 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 want these properties to be uh, EPC of C or higher. Well, if you look at the EPC one, we have to check the EPCs, property EPCs. 
it's very very difficult to get a C on a 1930s house and what you're finding is if you're looking at some of these um, properties they're just not meeting them so there's a whole load of um, education that needs to be done in regards to the EPC rules that is coming I might do a full video on this I'm in the same boat I've got a property I literally I, I did a refinance of uh, of a property we had to get the e no sorry it wasn't refinance I had to rent it out so we had to get the new EPC um, certificate um, done and the property's got loft conversion new windows new boiler flooring everything insulated decorated the EPC inspector said to me, um, it's a D. I was going, why is it a D? It's got a new boiler, new windows, double glaze, oh, you know, new door, new conservatory stuff. He goes, oh, um, we don't know. Uh, well, I don't know. I said, well, what do you mean you don't know? Can you give me some point? Yeah, you know, light bulbs and stuff like that. Well, it's got light bulbs in there. Can you tell me definitely why, how I can get to a C? Oh, uh, we, you know, because it's got a loft conversion, we don't know what insulation you've got in the loft. Well, I said, well, you know, you can lift the floorboard. He goes, yeah, well, you know, we, you can go to the council and ask the council uh, when the loft conversion was done, on what basis was it done? And I said, well, it was 20 years ago, the loft conversion. How, how do I find that out? Contact the council. Council don't have any documentation. It's an absolute mess. I'm telling you now, this thing is an absolute mess because most of these EPC inspectors, they, get, they do the survey, they come around, they put it in some system and the system rolls it out. So they don't actually know how it's working. Uh, that's my own experience of it so god knows what's going to happen god knows i mean that is a good property and it, it it should have passed you know um so i don't know about some of these properties that need a lot of work doing to it so there's a lot of challenges around that epc a lot of bridging finance we're doing so on on uh, on properties auction sort of stuff so that people are offloading more and more properties um but let me know what you guys think about where buy to let will be i mean recently um the lloyd's uh, chairman it was actually it was very interesting he was i think it was one of these committees uh, in the in the house of commons and he said he, he, it's a very difficult case for buy to let to make a case for buy to let and that's lloyd's um, and that's one of the biggest, I think it is the biggest lending group in the UK. Uh, you know, lenders like BM Solutions are owned by Lloyds. Halifax are owned by Lloyds. So, um, you know, the Scottish Widows is Lloyd. So uh, uh, it's, it's interesting um, where Vitalet is going to go. Um, what you have also seen is the pricing has started leveling out. And that's simply because that expensive tranche of money that the lenders had from the Liz Trust budget, they seem to have lent that money out and now there's a, a, a more sensible pricing. So they are actually buying their money at a more sensible pricing. Um, a, lot of, um, a lot of HMO stuff. So what you will find is these rental calculations get better as the property is yielding better money. So people are looking to go into HMO. They're doing a lot more HMOs. Um, and what I would say is it sounds great with HMOs, but there's a lot more responsibility um, and there's a lot more hassle with HMOs, okay? It's all great saying I earn four grand a month, but then you start looking at you know the breakdowns and you look at some of the issues that the HMOs have got. Um, we've got some huge problems with the legal system and in regards to um, evictions and trespass of rules and uh, the court system. We're, we're in a bit of a minefield there. Um, so you just got to be careful, guys. You know, more money, more problems, uh, uh, as they say. Uh, but yeah, so HMO deals, multi-unit deals, uh, multiple uh, properties in a block. So block of three, block of four, and you do it in one title. You don't have to do separate mortgages. Some people have been told you can do separate mortgages and, you know, go up to 75%. You can essentially do that. Um, or you could just go with one lender, pay one fee and put everything under, even if they've got separate leases. That's not a problem. Uh, new builds, more and more new builds coming up on buy to lets. Um, Got to be careful. There's an exposure issue with lenders. A lot of the lenders do not like to lend more than 25% of the block um, or, or a couple within each block. Um, some of those new builds in Manchester, Leeds, Birmingham, big problem because what they've been doing is they've been getting flogged to the Mid Middle Easterns and the Chinese guys. So what you've got is a block of flats that's like 85% owned by landlords, okay? Lenders don't like to lend on that because they say, mm, 
you know, you, they don't want too much exposure to a whole buy to let block. Okay, so sometimes, you know, you get everything right, you get all of this stuff right, value goes there and they say they don't want to lend. Um, Ex-local authority flats, we're doing a lot more buy to lets on ex-local authority flats, deck access, special type of properties. So those are, um, they actually yield really well. They're very hard to place from a mortgage perspective because of the construction type or the property type or the location, but they yield quite well from a rental calculation perspective. So life a little bit easier. Um, and like I said, if you are sitting on a high mortgage in, in the south, You've got a couple of choices. You do a product transfer with your existing lender. You you try, you go and pay out. Or you've got another option, which is the top slicing option, which I think we'll see more and more and more and more lenders approach. So what they will do is you're still, it's still you have got lenders that are, for example, you've got Barclays that do top slicing quite well, but their rental calculation and the way they assess things is really harsh, okay? So if you are a, somebody who's earning good money, okay, and if maybe you've got one other buy to let, they're not a bad shout, okay? Because they look at your actual earnings, your own employed earnings, let's say, but they'll also look at the buy to let earnings, and if there is a shortfall of 300 pounds, 400 pounds, and that's a big difference, okay? 400 pounds makes the difference of, you know, this to this, okay? Um, so you, they'll allow you to use that surplus income to put that on there. On the specialist side, the lenders like Precise, um, that, are, that are quite good with that. There are other lenders out there. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of Virgin, they'll do a little bit here and there. There are lots of lenders that will do top slicing, and I think we will see more and more lenders adapt this notion of top slicing to reduce the burden of this, okay? Um, as always, you, I, I've just I've just talked about like I, I don't know five percent of the, the, the some of the issues that somebody's got to look at. So it's so important you seek professional advice on buy to let guys. Uh, it is it is a specialist sector. Um, it's a sector that's changing. It's evolving on a daily basis. Okay, so um, seek professional advice if not from niche advice from any or the good brokers that are out there. There are lots of wonderful brokers out there that deal with buy to let, specifically on buy to let, and really know what they're talking about here. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Like and subscribe. Do you want more stuff like this? Do you want more product-based um, videos? Uh, let me know, uh, and I will hopefully try to uh, make some more videos. Take care, all the best. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.